Hi everyone, it's Nick here, and... And I'm Mark, and this is the second take. The second take? my first review ever. See, I'm blaming you, blaming you for this now. It's the ghosts. It's, it's the ghosts. ghosts. It's, it's the, the ghosts. ghosts that have done it. So we're looking at The Haunting of Bly Manor now. This is brought to us by Mike Flanagan, who did The Haunting of Hill House, which came out last year on Netflix. This new series landed on the 9th of October, and we thought we'd mix it up a little bit, a zhuzh, zhuzh. Um, As you mentioned just now, we actually had chicken wings, and we were doing a whole thing that nothing like... We definitely did not rip off any of the Now We Eat. Uh, At all. No. Or Now We Feast or we feast. anything like that, okay? Hot wings interviews. This is not derivative at all, okay? No. This is completely brand bloody new, all right? Because he does it with interviews, you see. We're yeah, doing it with a, a review. review. Though they sound the same, mm -hmm. they are very different words. They do have a view sound that they're... Yes. Whatever. <laughs> We can start talking about the series properly. So this, as I mentioned, is a show that is done by Mike Flanagan. It is based on the 1989 um, book by... Um, 1899. 1899. Eight, actually, sorry. Um, called The Turn of the Sh Screw, and it's by Henry James. Uh, it's basically a 140-year-old novel has come back to haunt us. Mm -hmm. And you say haunt, but this show is actually not particularly scary. Mm. Which is why I like him being here, because he's terrified of horrors. But he managed yeah. to watch it. I don't watch horror series, ever. I just don't. I've not seen any other series. I've not seen any of it. I spent a lot of it just looking away from the screen. He did. As the music built up. <laughs> You're just like... So look away, look away. So this, this horrible is going to happen. Don't want to see that. So The Haunting of Bly Manor is a lot scary. Sorry, it's not as scary as The Haunting of Hill House. Now, The Haunting of Hill House got quite a good reputation because it's bloody terrifying. In particular, that, that one scene in... I'm telling you. I don't. I, I'm trying to tell you. I don't you. need to hear your excuses. I'm not making your excuses. Bullshit. I saw. Some... Which you will never ever see. I'm not watch um, it. Great jump scares in that. I love the show because you also play it. It plays with um, perception and and whether you can actually perceive a lot of the ghosts. Apparently, each episode had twenty to thirty in the background. This is not really the same like that. They do do the whole in the background thing, and I pointed out to him a couple of times where. The camera will be in one character, the camera will go back to another character, the camera will go back to the character, and someone's in the background. Yeah. But you might not notice it. A lot of people don't notice that. So it does do it a few times. This season is, and I say season, it's not chronologically correct. They have nothing to do with each other. They do have the same characters. Sorry, actors playing characters. We'll get to that in mm -hmm. a minute. And a lot of the cast is, sorry, a lot of the crew um, from the first um, outing, if you, if you will, is in this. But they do not have a sort of timeline. It's not a one or a two. So, um, like I say, the first um, season of this was a lot scarier. Haunting of um, Bly Manor is a lot more interesting in the sense that it is it plays with time. And it plays with that quite nicely, then, with narration with, uh, and time. With memory, mm. with identity, uh, with time. It's very cerebral. It is, as we said in the first one through of this interview... Um, practice it, run, darling. Practice run. Uh, it's the it's the inception of ghost stories. It is, yeah. And I was just remembering something that I mentioned to you whilst we were watching it. Mm -hmm. They talk about um, um, not Alzheimer's. They talk about um, there is a there is dementia. Dementia. And this show, I'm just thinking about it right now. If you want to think of a theme for something, this would be it. Dementia. One of the characters' mothers um, passes in this uh, from dementia, and. The entire show, if you look at it on reflection, it's, it's, it's framed in a narration, okay? So the very first episode, in the first ten minutes, you have a character at a wedding telling a ghost story. Now, this is probably the most cliched way of doing something, but I think they did quite well in this. It did ruin it because I knew exactly who the character was about halfway through, um, but that's okay otherwise. So yes, like I said, it's framed like this, but the dementia theme runs throughout it. You have the idea of identity loss. You have the idea of losing yourself and losing your soul. You have the idea of... Time being completely muddled up, with, in particular with yeah. one character. Don't want to say anything because it's spoilers. Living in memories, reliving, reliving memories. it, and knowing that you're living in a memory. So they have a lot of nice mechanics in this. Like for example, the ghosts are able to take over a person's body, which is nothing in itself new. It's it's interesting actually because um, at the beginning you you do start to wonder if this is going to be a possession story. Yes, right? you really really do. Yeah, um, but it's not possession by Passe. the devil. Yeah, uh, it's it's humans possessing humans. Or ghosts of humans possessing humans, and it's it's done like I say in a quite a nice unique way, um, where they have this idea of tucking their consciousness away. So if someone jumps into you, like if I jumped into Mark, he would be tucked away in a memory, and he would know that he's been tucked away by and what's what, what's going on. So halfway through the season, you don't know what the hell's going on, um, and then you go, oh, now I get it. It's very 
yeah, it's, it's a quite a nice revelation when you twig that exactly how things are happening, why particular characters are saying things like the little kids always saying. Perfectly splendid. Why would a seven-year-old say perfectly splendid or a six-year-old say perfect? Watch we out. find out. So it has a lot of nice things like that, um, which made it very interesting. So I think it's, this is far more interesting than, than horrific to me. Yeah, yeah, it's cerebral and it's clever. Um, and actually, there was one episode where we spent half the episode trying to figure out if one character was actually dead or alive in the narrative. Um, yeah, or if we were watching, if we were watching a ghost of that character. So that was that was really interesting. It, it does very make, it does make you think, very inceptiony. Mm. The the way it's shot. I'm not used to horror tropes. I don't watch them. Um, I don't. Yeah, it's not my thing. Um, I did spend a bit looking away from the screen, admittedly. But the way it's shot is actually really good. It's it's stunningly shot. It's what I would expect from a from a horror. Mm. In a lot of ways, it's very gothic. It's That's what this is. Gothic. It's a very gothic um, take. It's not a horrific gothic take. It's the whole idea of gothic uh, with with romance, for example. And this is kind of a romantic series, which works. It, to me, it doesn't work. You see, because the romance sort of thing only comes in at the very end, and you're kind of like, what? Where does this come from? This character wasn't a major player, and suddenly they are, suddenly they are and I can't, of course, go into it because of spoilers, but to me, the ending kind of petered out. It didn't do a great job with punching at the ending, like the season one season one did. So, yeah, to me, that was a bit of a, a bit of a wet blanket towards the end kind of story, there but this a, is not a wet blanket, so it's quickly tucked into some of this. Of, um, there was a, a bit of a question at the end of, okay, it's the last episode, we're pretty sure we know how it's going to end now, but are they going to find a way to redeem this character and bring them back? Or, you know, is there going to be an escape and a way out? Oh, God. Or is that it? You know, are they as locked into their traje trajectory of tragedy? That's a tongue twister. Trajectory of tragedy. Say that after you. Try saying that after chilli sauce. So, okay, that's really, really a lot hotter than um, when it's cooked. That's um, got quite a bite to it. That is a nice five on the on the scale of ten for me. Face is now going a bit red. Um, so, yeah, like I said, <clears> the, 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 the narrative in this is what makes it interesting. It's sitting on 86% of Rotten Tomatoes right now, which I think is not bad. I'd give it an 8 that's out of 10. That's a lot of tomatoes. Hmm? That's a lot of tomatoes. It's a lot of tomatoes, yes. It's a very fresh rating. Um, this, so that's a good stuff, okay? That's a great stuff. It's got some great horror moments in the first three episodes. Peter's out with the horror, but it increases the interest because you find out the characters are greatly developed. They're really well developed. Even the, yep. even the, the damn ghost gets its own episode yep. without any spoilers. So the characters are really, really well developed, and you, you can believe them. But that's, that's, that's the good stuff. The bad stuff, yeah, now. Before we flip to the bad stuff, I was just talking about how, uh, character development. It feels like Blind Man in itself has a character. Mm. In the same way that Gormenghast, uh, the actual architecture is oppressive and present. The way this is shot... And there's a the reason for it, too. ...inside the manor is, is oppressive. You would not want to walk around there at night. No. And you're not allowed to, as a matter of fact. One of the characters literally mm -hmm. says, don't do that, because there's a reason why. And just talking back about Gormenghast and, and, and actual house and the manor being... A character. There's even a little, um, well, I say little, it's quite a big dollhouse, isn't it? Oh, a replication dollhouse. of the actual house. And inside said dollhouse, the little girl um, has, you know, little dolls, and each one is respectively in bed at the particular time. It's almost like a live action, you know, CCTV camera kind of thing. And when the camera's panning through each of these rooms, you can see, hang on, that's not a person. Who the hell's that? And of course, that is oh, the ghosts. She's literally yep. placing the ghosts where the ghosts are in the house. Except for that one particular doll, which Mark hated very uh, much. I tell you what, this this series is a bit like being... It's like playing creepy bingo. <laughs> I like that. Creepy kids murdering animals. Uh, sorry for the spoiler, but... Oh, yes. I forgot about that. Fair warning, I guess. Creepy kids murdering animals. Are people alive? Are they dead? Uh, which is very... The others, as Nicole Kidman, but... Um, faceless ghosts with no eyes... That's bringing back to dimension when you're literally losing your character. Yeah, yeah. So the um, visuals in this are, are, are not... They are scary, but it's actually really not that special. Like this, As far as the special effects, it's not like season one, which paid a lot more with that. So, yeah, I mean, they did a very good job in this. And as far as narration, I keep saying narration, I mean more along the narrative style, as in the time constructs, running... Whether they, Are you looking at the past? Are you looking at the present? Are you looking at the future? I mean, you get to... I think it's uh, episode five or... Yeah, episode five or six. And suddenly you realise, oh, shit! This is what happened in the first opening of the of the first, yeah. you know, when they arrive at the house. You're like, so that's why that weird thing happened. So it plays with a lovely, great jumping backwards and forwards. It keeps you engaged yeah. because you have to think about it. And it's, and it, it, draw, it draws you in like that really It does, well. yeah, yeah, very much so. 
And it, it plays with the idea, like I say, it's almost like a time travel horror, which I haven't seen before. I don't think I've ever I, seen a horror. I wouldn't know, to be honest, I, I don't watch this stuff. Um, sci-fi and that, you know, we see, we see time travel tropes. New Star Trek, time travel. Yep. Um, this felt more like, I mean, they're travelling through memories rather than time. Um, and the memories show the different timelines and flashbacks and it's... Yeah, it's actually it's really brilliant. emotional at times. It is very emotional. I mean, um, I think Mark was... I think he popped out for a little bit. I think it's episode five that looks at Hannah. I don't want to give you spoilers away, but at the end of the episode, that, she's such an amazing actress. Incredible. Yeah. I mean, at the end, I was almost yeah. in tears. I was like, my God, that is a really heart-wrenching story of what happened happens with her. And, um, yeah, speaking of heart-wrenching stories, that was quite nice. Much hotter than <sighs> um, the, the chicken wings. This is the one that I'm terrified about. You can take that, because I don't trust you. Nope. What? COVID. See, you won't even take the COVID. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This stuff will probably cure You're it. Twist it. Twist it. Get, get in there. Look. Get in there. Oh, shit. Son? What are you saying? Um, Go on. You see, he says this now. Yeah, properly. He says this now, but in a couple of minutes' time, when he's vomiting over himself, screaming COVID, this is madness. There's not many jokes about that. Okay. This is madness. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, Jesus Christ. I can feel it coming at the back of my neck, I think. In 30 seconds, I'm going to hate this, but right now it's lush. Mmm. That's tasty, actually. It's not too bad. So, yeah, this wasn't necessarily a horror, yeah. I say. It's definitely um, the gothic, as you mentioned. It's a gothic romance with a bit of horror. Tragedy. Mm. Go gothic romance tragedy. We'll, we'll go with that. Um, but just going, just <laughs> before we run out of time here, time's um, going numb. <laughs> we... <clears throat> let's have a look, quick look at the sort of negative side of it. The accent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my God. If you can't do an accent, stop trying. Yeah. Because actually... Some, some feedback I saw was people dissing the acting. To be frank, I don't think it's the acting that, which is at fault here. There's some really good talent in this. Um, and it's great to see uh, Rahu Kohli, who was in iZombie, actually be able to do a role which let him flex with his talent. Because you could see his potential. He's very good, yeah. He's a good e actor. Even in that cartoon pulp, trashy iZombie, you can see his potential. So it's good to see him be able to do that. But yeah, if you can't do an accent, just... Don't and they have this horrible over the top oof. English. I was born in the manner with a golden spoon shoved up my ass. This horrible accent comes out, of, and because they're using it's just an American production, and they're using a lot of the actors um, from the first, you know, episode, and um, that's why they're there. So obviously they're American trying to put on English accents, which doesn't work. And as you say, it detracts away from the actual abilities pulls, of the actor. It pulls down performances, mm. which is which is a real shame. Um, took a while to get used to yeah. which is so story driven yeah. and character and character driven, driven yeah um, yeah I can see why in the first couple of episodes before you kind of start to ignore the accents and invest in the characters I can see how for some people they found it difficult to get through the first episode uh, my lips are going numb I can't yeah I'm, on the left side of it here it's really <laughs> burning right now and um, yeah that's going to give me wow. some heartburn but um, yeah so like I said it's not a horrific show it's Really well written. Characters are quite pretty great. Um, and at the same time, the last two episodes kind of, to me, were like, eh. Um, because it didn't follow the entire narrative build-up. Suddenly, like, as, as I mentioned, one character becomes the main character. You're like, then why wasn't the main character throughout the entire goddamn thing? Um, but yeah, uh, to me, it was an easy 8 out of 10. What would you give it? I'd give that an 8 out of 10 as well. I would watch another series by this... By these writers and directors. Which we should be getting another one next year, I think. This is part of an anthology um, from 1898, so hopefully we'll get a couple more um, coming out. Okay. And Flanagan is a very good um, showrunner. He's a really, really good showrunner. Yeah, that's quite a hot chili. Mm. Mm. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Say bye-bye, Mark. Thank you. Bye-bye, Mark. See you if we survive this. <laughs> Catch you guys later. Bye. You're supposed to say bye-bye, Mark. Like, as in, bye-bye, Mark. That's too funny. It's good night from me and it's good night from him. <laughs> good night. <laughs>